Hi, everybody. My name is Darlene Rondo, and I'm the Vice President of Best Practices for Leonardo's Digital Marketing Group, and I'll be your host for today's special event. We're really excited to share with you important tools and tips to help you address your digital marketing challenges that will help you attract more travelers online, stand out, and ultimately drive more bookings. A few housekeeping items before we begin. First, we're going to be recording today's webinar. And at the end of the webinar, we're going to send you a thank you for joining us email with a link to that recording, which you can share or listen to again at your leisure. Additionally, and some of you have already found it, you have a questions dialog box in your GoToMeeting panel. As we move through our discussion today, please feel free to send in your questions and we'll address the questions throughout our webinar as well as at the end of the presentation. We're also going to be tweeting today, so you can also join in the conversation at hashtag LeoWebinar. So before we begin, as we usually do, I conduct a poll because we want to get your sense of the following question. Today's question is, what is your biggest marketing challenge? And you have some answers to choose from that will help us understand where you guys are at. So the first answer is, my biggest marketing challenge is managing multiple tools and systems, keeping my content and media consistent across all the channels, improving my web presence, staying ahead on social media, or understanding ROI. And so we'll let everybody take a minute and weigh in. And so far, it looks like the big winner is improving my web presence, followed by staying ahead on social media. And we hear that a lot at Leonardo, just, you know, there's so many things to try and keep track of. The good news is, for those of you who have joined us today, we're going to be addressing a lot of these issues and show you how you'll be able to improve that and um, perhaps make 2015 a little bit easier for you. So the majority of you have voted and uh, it didn't change much. The majority of the results indicate that improving my web presence is what everybody is concerned about. So I'm gonna close that poll and then we will move on with the presentation. I'd like to introduce our first guest, Michael Ulch. And Michael has more than 10 years of product management experience helping companies to deliver innovative products that solve real world market problems for their customers. And currently, Michael is the product manager for Visley at Leonardo, where he designed and delivered the new Visley product solution that you're gonna hear about today. Visley helps hotel marketers tell their unique story to travel shoppers at every point in the shopping journey. Michael is going to address some of the top pain points that we've heard among today's hoteliers and provide some guidance to address these challenges. Welcome, Michael, we're happy to have you. I'd also like to introduce our second guest, Emily Drennan. Emily was born and raised in Southern Lancaster County where she started at Lancaster Doubletree as a guest services agent in 2011. In 2012, she graduated from Shippensburg University as a magnet cum laude in, with a Bachelor of Arts focusing on communications, theater, and music. Her passion for hospitality grew during her college career, and she chose to remain in the guest services position full-time upon graduation. Emily was promoted to front desk supervisor in early 2014 and recently moved into the marketing position. So we're really thrilled, as always, to have someone from the hotel community join us. So a little bit of an intro before we continue. As the year comes to a close, one of the issues that's top of mind for hoteliers today is learning how to better manage digital marketing activities across the many channels and devices that people are using to shop and book. And this goes from mobile, and social to your own hotel website and to third-party travel sites. And the increasingly complex digital landscape has really changed the way travel shoppers research and secure hotel rooms because now they have more choices than ever. 
And while these options are good, it creates challenges for today's modern hotel marketer. The infographic on this slide shows just how complex it can get. And so today we're all about discussing how you can make sure your hotels stand out and ensure consistency across all the different channels that you're present on from your hotel website, your mobile site, your Facebook page, and all of the various third-party channels that consumers use. So at this point, I'm going to reintroduce Michael Alch, and Michael is going to go into more detail on some of the most common hotel digital marketing challenges that we hear about at Leonardo and some tips to address them. Here you go, Michael. Thanks, Darlene. Thanks for having me here today to talk more about the challenges that we've heard from hoteliers and why we created Visly to help solve those. First of all, one of the biggest questions a hotelier can ask is, how can I make my hotel stand out compared to other hotels in my city, my neighborhood, or even across the street? At Leonardo, we believe in visual storytelling, that is sharing your hotel's unique story to your potential guests and travel shoppers. And every hotel from roadside motels to beach resorts has a unique story to tell. Where should this story be told? Where are your potential guests shopping for travel? Let's look at specific channels like web, mobile, social, and how you can stand out. Uh, so here we have, uh, we have the challenge of web marketing. One of the biggest challenges we hear at Leonardo is maintaining an effective presence. And I think you saw that in, um, in, the, uh, in the poll that just happened. Uh, and you also spoke about this during last month's webinar. This is very key to making sure your hotel story is told to your travel shoppers. Web savvy hoteliers are taking a hard look at their web presence in 2014 and moving into 2015 to improve their presence to encourage travelers to book directly. So what are some of the biggest challenges when it comes to web marketing? How do you create effective content for your website and decide what to showcase? Should you showcase your rooms, your restaurant? Should the images on your website include people? Once you have crafted your effective content, how do you keep the story consistent across your web properties? Maintaining a fresh and updated look is vital. No one wants to look at a website that looks like it was built when the internet was born. Let's keep in mind, a lot has changed since then and it changes every year. As hotels evolve strategies to move away from the dependence of revenue from OTAs and third-party sites, we see a lot of hotels like Citizen M and Little Palm Island, the hotel featured here, improving their web presence to highlight the features travelers want to see and make their hotel website so compelling that it seals the deal with travel shoppers to click the book now button and drive direct bookings. Okay, next slide there. So now we'll look at the, uh, the web marketing solved. Okay, there we go. In order to solve your web marketing challenges, you, first un you must first understand your consumer. Based on our analysis of more than 500 million media views, we at Leonardo know that travel shoppers love to view guest rooms. This is the top performing category of images for hotels. After guest rooms, the second highest performing category Restaurant. This rich data allows us to suggest to hotels, do not use a building shot as your hero image on your website. A guest room or perhaps restaurant shot will catch the attention of your consumers. Since seeing your hotel via images, videos, and virtual tours are important to your consumers, and yes, I'm using quotes around seeing since consumers are first experiencing your hotel online and not in person, your hotel website should have new and fresh content. This can be done in many ways. You could hire a professional photographer to produce new content. Also, the web is full of amateur photographers. Look to user-generated content, sometimes known as UGC, to save yourself time and money and supplement your professional content. UGC will also ensure that you have a steady stream of content available for your fingertips. A balanced mix of professional and UGC content is recommended to energize your hotel story to your consumers. We know that hotels have struggles with direct booking, and one of the ways to solve this challenge is to make sure that you're giving travelers the information that they're looking for. For example, the slide we're looking at right now, let's take a look at all the important parts. First, that high, large resolution image is very engaging. Who couldn't see themselves there right now, especially with the snowstorm we're getting here in Toronto? 
The navigation is very clear and concise to direct your travel shoppers to your room, special offers, reviews, location, telephone number, and social links. However, notice how the booking engine is front and center. Now, all these suggestions seem to be a tall order to consider. In order to do all this, you want an efficient and easy system that allows you to update your content, add images, keep your website up to date, and more. That's actually one of the main reasons we built Visly, a new multi-channel digital marketing system to help hoteliers do all this and more. Many of our customers have been very happy that they can create and manage their hotel website without writing any code or hiring a webmaster. Here's your next okay. slide, Mike. There's a little bit of a latency between, uh, between them, so don't let that catch up. Okay, sounds good. Okay, so let's talk about the M word here, mobile. Many resist talking about it for various reasons, but the truth is mobile is becoming more important than ever. Here's an interesting stat that I found from Morgan Stanley. Mobile web, uses, mo mobile web usage is expected to surpass PCs in 2015. That's next year. If you're like me, you have your smartphone or tablet on you or next to you right now and rarely leave home without it. You often find yourself surfing websites on these devices. How long do you stay on a website that has not been optimized for your smartphone? Personally, nothing is more annoying than having to pinch and zoom to see images or read text. Travel shoppers are no different. 67% of users are more likely to leave your site if it isn't mobile optimized and will move on to another that is, possibly even a competitor. Think of that, over six out of every 10 users will leave your site without even experiencing your hotel's unique story if it's not mobile ready. Here are some of the mobile challenges we've heard from hoteliers. It's hard to keep up with the changing technologies and devices. I want to get into mobile, but I don't even know where to start. I don't have enough time or resources to start my mobile site. These challenges wouldn't be at all important if a mobile site was nice to have, but today it is a must have. So how can you solve the M word? So for mobile, you really need to make sure that the content that on-the-go travelers, shoppers want to see want to see is available on their devices. This comes down to finding a system or web developer that lets you do that and is easy, efficient, and excellent. With Visly, for example, you don't actually need a web developer or a big budget to create a mobile site. Visly allows you to create a smartphone or tablet optimized site using the same visual story that you used on your website. Best thing is, if you update your story in Visly, it will send that update everywhere it's being used. Looking for direct bookings from your mobile consumers, Visly also has your booking engine front and center and a one-click to call to easily get in touch with the hotel. All right, moving on. So look at the challenge of managing multiple travel sites. So when you stop and think about all the different online travel sites that shoppers visit out there, from online travel agencies to MetaSearch to corporate booking channels, the numbers are baffling and a little overwhelming. These sites present their own challenges, such as how can I keep my media fresh and up to date? How do I remove old media that no longer represents my hotel? How do I update and manage my media in real time? How can I merchandise my hotel better and not just compete on price? So the solution for managing travel, multiple travel websites, the best way to solve the problem about managing your media on all these different travel sites is to use one central system. I know I can barely remember my username and password on three sites, let alone hundreds of these different travel sites. One central system allows hoteliers to update in one place and allow the system to syndicate everywhere for them. Visly allows hotel marketers to manage their content on RV Network, the largest travel website network in the industry, by creating digital brochures with their images, videos, and virtual tours created to showcase unique features of the hotel. hotel. Hoteliers know that not every travel site is targeted to the same travel shopper. Visly even allows you to target different digital brochures to different travel websites. With all these different channels from OTAs to meta search sites to your own website and social networks, you want to tell a consistent story. If not, you'll lose the travel shopper in the confusion. So being consistent is key. And now let's take a minute and look at the challenges that social media present. 
Just as there are many different travel sites, there are many different social media networks. So which social channels do hotels need to be on? Is social media a channel where hotel marketers can reach travel shoppers? How can you measure success while using social media? Okay. Social media is another great channel to reach your travel shoppers. It is part of a well-balanced marketing strategy. Social networks allow hotels to share their unique story with potential and returning customers, especially when using multimedia content. Here's an interesting stat about multimedia. 85% of consumers that watch a product video are more likely to buy. And that video has a viral reach of 77%, meaning 77% of social users have seen a video that was shared by a friend. The very fact of social media allows your consumers to engage with your story, but more importantly, allows them to amplify your story to other potential shoppers by sharing. By the very fact of these, social, these networks being social, users love to share a great deal with their friends and followers. Think about publishing social-only offers when travelers are checking you out on Facebook. And never forget to have your booking engine front and center to drive more direct bookings. It costs nothing to advertise on your own social presence. So with all these great solutions to hotel challenges, the question remains, how do you know if it's working? You create all this great content for your hotel story, but are consumers engaged? What are they viewing? Which offers are they booking? Which rooms are most attractive on which channels? Hotel marketers need the right data to make the right decisions to increase engagement with the brand and drive more booking. So any system used for your hotel's digital marketing should make sure all your content is tracked so you can measure performance, engagement, and visitors to, the, to make intelligent decisions. This includes tracking your content on your ho hotel's website, mobile and tablet sites, social media networks, and third-party travel websites. One of my favorite features in Visly today and something our customers are loving our customers are loving is seeing which media is performing best. It shows our hoteliers how many times media items are viewed and shared with their customers. And for example, this intelligence easily allows our hotel marketers to pick a hero image for the website that has better potential to wow consumers and push them to click book now. So that takes us across web, mobile, social, and third-party travel websites detailing just some, some of the challenges that hotels described to us here at Leonardo, and hopefully giving you some ideas on how to solve these simple suggestions to enhance your very own hotel marketing. Thanks, Michael, and uh, thank you, audience. We had a number of great questions come in, and we'll uh, tee those up in a second. Uh, you know, consistency is key, particularly online. Showing the same story on all of the sites that you're presented on builds trust and credibility so that the consumer is confident in choosing your hotel. And having a multi-channel plan means that you've determined the stories you want to tell and to which audience. And then you set out to distribute or syndicate that story on the corresponding channel. As an example, if you're a hotel that hosts weddings, you want to be sure to describe those capabilities for that kind of event on a site like OneWet. And what Visly enables you to do pretty easily, as Michael alluded to, is you're able to tell different stories to different audiences on different channels. And then lastly, you know, of course, uh, you need to measure what you're doing and then keep the things that are working for you in place and modify the things that aren't working. You know, one of the beauties of digital marketing is that you can implement something and quickly tell if it's working. And if it's not working, then you can quickly change it. And, you know, that's, uh, that's a benefit. So um, thanks, Mike. That was uh, a really good uh, insight into our new product, Visly, and what it's doing for folks. One of the questions that came up, Mike, during the webinar is, so how do I tie the metrics of someone viewing my media and where they're viewing it back to bookings? Can you uh, shed some light on that, or shall I, shall I pick that up? Um, sorry, can I hit the question one more time? Yeah, so, you know, you have showed us uh, ways to 
track some of the metrics of the Visly product, like what media is being viewed, how many times, on what channels. But I'm always asked as a hotelier, you know, how do I tie that to a booking? So there's different ways to tie that back. Um, one of the examples that I gave there was uh, if you're looking at the metrics of what media people are looking at, um, and you know, if you were to sort that by uh, looking at the top performing media, that allows you to that allows you the intelligence to take that media, maybe put it on the the front page of your website. You could put it on another page that you want to target that media and, and invoke the the book now from the users. And then what you can do is you could actually go back to your booking engine and just see if what I took from the, the analytics of seeing what was happening, is that actually increasing the booking? And then what you can do is if it isn't working right away, you can always adjust that. You can always look at what's being tracked and then uh, see if that's uh, increasing the bookings or decreasing the bookings. If it's increasing, you've done a great job. If it's decreasing, you just take another plan of action. Excellent. Thanks, Michael. Nicholas also has a question, and it's really directed at uh, a multi-channel digital marketing plan for hotels. Who are the main uh, players in the V network? So, so the main players, um, there's definitely different groups. Um, so you'll have anything from an online travel agency to a meta search. Um, and if you start to look through all those different ones, you'll see uh, ones like Priceline uh, would be uh, an example of one that's in your online travel agency. You'll have TripAdvisor that would be one in a review and meta search site. So definitely there are uh, key players in each group that we, uh, that we target in the Bisley product. Yeah, and just as a follow-up, uh, you know, to the point I made about targeting your audience. So if you knew that a lot of your guests were coming from a certain geographic area, then, you know, you would want to go to, as an example, uh, Santa Barbara, uh, Santa Barbara CVB, and make sure that the stories that you're telling to the folks coming from Santa Barbara are created such that they resonate with those people. And so that's one of the things you're able to do with channel targeting. You know, another example would be we have a very big presence on all of the corporate travel channels like Concur and American Express, et cetera. And so you know that the audiences on those channels are corporate travelers. So you want to make sure that the story you're telling to those corporate travelers really highlights the attributes of your property relative to what those kinds of travelers need. So, you know, there's all sorts of clever marketing ways that you can start really zeroing in on your target market. And when you do that, in, you improve conversion. So at this point, we are going to move on. Thanks again, Michael. Very informative, judging by all the questions from the audience. And I am going to reintroduce Emily Drennan. And as I said earlier, Emily is from the Lancaster Doubletree by Hilton. So, Emily, over to you. Thanks, Darlene, and thanks for having me. Um, I'm just going to go right in. Um, we were from the Lancaster Doubletree. If you're not familiar with where we are, um, we are in the southeastern end of um, Pennsylvania. Um, we're commonly known for Amish country. Um, and one of our biggest hotel um, digital marketing challenges is reaching um, people out of that Lancaster area, um, out of the East Coast area, people who are not familiar um, with where Lancaster, PA is um, and the great destination that it can be. Um, obviously, when people are looking for vacations, they're looking for beach houses or the mountains. Um, but we have something that's really quaint and really um, beautiful that we can reach our guests with. Um, so our biggest challenge is reaching those guests um, and making ourselves visible, um, which we do, you know, through our websites and through social media. Um, one of our other big challenges is definitely keeping up with the various social media and review platforms, um, and just keeping up. As soon as you feel like you've got them all, they pop up with a new one. Um, so, 
you know, Visly has really helped us in reaching those travel shoppers um, and reaching out to them in different various ways um, without me having to stress about, you know, something new popped up, it's already in the platform, which is great. Uh, it really has helped us out with that. Um, they also allow us to do target marketing um, directly to corporate versus family. We have a really fun indoor water playground, but our corporate travelers who we get really aren't interested in the, the water playground, so there's no sense in trying to get them to stay with us if they think it's just a family place. Um, so it's important for us to target um, between the two um, and also having an optimized mobile website, which has really helped um, to boost our presence on um, Google search and, and all of that so that we can be seen. Um, as far as how we stand out on social media, um, Visily has really helped us with that as well. Um, I think it's probably one of my favorite features that we have found with Visily um, is the promotions and the tours and the book now that you can attach right into um, your social media sites, which is really great. Um, we are active on almost all of the social media sites you can think of at this point. We have Google, Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter, um, but I think it's more important to stay updated and active on those social media sites. Um, it's always more about quality versus quantity. Um, I have a lot of time to devote to these, so um, it has really helped me in that, and Visly has really um, made it even easier on me. Um, but yeah, with Facebook particularly, um, their promotions and tours and book now, which you can kind of see on there, um, is really an awesome feature because people can book right from our Facebook page. So if that's where they're following us, um, it's just great that they can go right to it and look at it that way. Um, as also with tours, you can add um, you know, specifics when people are, find your Facebook page. You're not just seeing the current post and currently what you're up to, but they can easily access um, what you're all about without having to search for you then in Google. It just kind of combines everything which is really great. Um, Emily, um, Amy from the audience wants to know, how did you choose the social channels that you ended up being on? Um, I kind of based it on mostly images. Um, I have found that guests really love to know what's going on on your property. Um, I did Facebook and Twitter, obviously, because they're the two um, highest reach. Uh, but then I also added Pinterest and Instagram because of the images. Um, and I know that guests are really um, active on those, and we have a, you know, it's a lot of fun to not just post things um, that are promotional, but also post like, here's, you know, this is what we're up to, this is, you know, get to know us personally. Um, I think that adds an extra story level um, to your promotions and marketing. Um, so that's kind of how I've been deciding. Obviously, I don't do many of the ones that you can't, you know, share your story as easily. Um, so I've kind of shied away from others, but um, I've moved more into Google Plus. That's kind of where I'm at right now, really trying to move into that. I feel like it's a really great place to go to, and it's going to continue to grow um, just through statistics. And so now I'm moving into Google Plus more. And uh, Janice wants to know um, how have you measured? How do you measure your success or the interest on a site like Pinterest? Um, with Pinterest, I base it on um, how many people are repinning or viewing. Um, that's kind of where I get with that one. Um, I also like when I pin on those, I tend to put them on Twitter as well, um, just driving people to Pinterest to see that we're on there. Um, it's also very helpful when we have um, people who are interested in events or things like that, specifically weddings. We have a lot of wedding inspirations, and um, a lot of our wedding stuff is on Pinterest because a lot of brides, I know I was one recently, and that's where I spent most of my time was on Pinterest. Um, so I use um, that as well to get our brides to that point. Um, for measuring, I did a lot of, you could do a lot of measuring through different platforms. I used them all to get most of them for these kind of platforms, um, but I mostly use Visibly for um, Facebook and Twitter. What I found interesting, what you just said, Emily, is that you use one channel to drive traffic to another channel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's a super smart way 
to do it, you know, as we were talking earlier, not enough hours in a day to do all this stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. So that's a very smart uh, approach, and, uh, you know, those in the audience should uh, make a note of that. You know, you don't have to create brand new content every time. And as Emily said, you know, she's taking stuff and repurposing it and using it on a variety of channels. And I think the most important thing is just knowing um, what your audience is. In some cases, you can repurpose them. In others, um, it's just not relevant to what you're trying to drive. Um, I feel that Twitter and Pinterest work really well together. Um, so does Instagram and, and Twitter, because the word people will tend to go and see the picture after they've read your description. Yeah, good point. And so you were talking about standing out on social media. How do you develop the stories that you put on social media? Obviously, this is a looks like it's a holiday <laughs> has a holiday twist to it. Yes. Well, um, we a lot of my stories actually come from other employees. I I always tell them to stay open with me with ideas and what we're up to. Um, I'm busy all throughout the hotel, so I sometimes will catch everything. But when I don't, um, for instance, the one with Gunner uh, and the watermelon, we actually, I got that from the kitchen staff. They sent me a picture and like, look what he did. And um, I was just so excited I had to post it. Um, and that, you know, everyone was pretty excited to see his masterpiece. Um, and our tree actually is one of the biggest features right now at our property. And once I realized how popular the tree was, um, and we have a scavenger hunt on our tree, um, we realized we should start posting all the unique ornaments that you can find on our tree um, that the kids have been looking for as they're staying here. So it's kind of neat to highlight um, some of the ornaments that we have hiding in there. Um, and people on Instagram have really enjoyed seeing each day and what we have on there. One of the great things about what you're talking about, I think, Emily, is that you know a lot of hotels will say, yeah, sure. You know, I'm. You know, you're a big resort hotel on a beautiful beach. Easy to tell a lot of great stories. But what you've done at the Double Tree Lancaster is you have just uh, developed your own story around things that you've created. And like you said, you took just something that the that the chef did, and then you know, and then. In, uh, in another example, just taking a Christmas tree and creating a story around that. So, you know, you can do a lot even if you're at a limited service or uh, a mid-scale uh, hotel. You definitely can. I feel that um, every hotel has a really unique story, um, and it may not come from your location. It may come from um, the people that work there or um, something you offer that's unique. Um, but I definitely have learned, um, and Visley really helped me with that too, is just developing like your own personal story um, and coming to life with, you know, creating your own story. Yeah, exactly. Um, Sandra from the audience wants to know, is most of the interaction on your social channels with existing guests or are you somehow reaching potential guests as well? Uh, I, we're definitely reaching potential guests. I get messages um, from people then asking um, about our property. So I know we are reaching um, potential guests. And I definitely know that we have people on there that stay often. Um, I've, you know, I have personal relationships with them when they come and stay. Um, so it's definitely a nice mix of people. I feel that um, a lot of times the people who stay or have stayed before, just by them interacting with me, has reached new guests and their friends and their potential guests. Um, as well. So I feel that we reach a pretty good amount of potential guests um, just by engaging with the ones that we currently has or have. Yeah. yeah, and that's the beauty of social, right, is that it's casual, it's friendly, and uh, this, we have an interesting stat recently that it was in the Google 2014 Traveler Study that today consumers will trust their friends and family, and even strangers over brands. And, you know, this has a lot to do with the social phenomenon that we see. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think um, we, uh, you know, of course, they get statistics, but even just in experience, um, just being real with guests and 
you know, letting your personality shine through um, has really helped us. And, you know, there's a storytelling aspect to it that I feel that people enjoy. Um, and when they come here, that story continues for them, and I think that's great. Um, and I do a lot of that just through, um, you know, taking good pictures. And I think that images are more powerful than words. Um, so our beautiful images are, are what capture their attention, and then they read what we have to say, and that creates the story together. And I think um, that's really where I get a lot of my inspiration from is the photos around the area that I take. Um, it's great because Visily has allowed me to display all those images throughout um, the internet and on different sites that otherwise I probably wouldn't be able to get them on and without a lot of work. Um, so it makes it a lot easier um, for that as well. And that kind of ties, Emily, to Frank's question from the audience. Uh, how are you geo-targeting market? How am I geo-targeting? Yeah, are you doing that through Facebook? Um, we do that through Facebook. Um, a lot of our potential guests are from the Jersey, New York area. Um, so we tend to target towards that area for specific events. Um, so we tend to do that for, pic you know, like certain times of year, like when it's spring, we'll usually take a picture and, and target at that area because that's typically when they come and visit us. Um, mm -hmm. So I definitely do that more. I do it mostly through Facebook. I don't really um, do it through any of the other social media platforms. Mm -hmm. The other thing, and, and we're looking at your website here, which is uh, really stunning. One of the things that strikes me is that the copy that you've written to describe what we're looking at in the visual are very uh, uh, complementary to each other. And one of the things I would point out to the audience is a best practice that we often uh, talk about, which is bolding or bulleting the things that you really want consumers to take notice of. Because we know that complementary Wi-Fi is one of those things that everybody wants, right? So <laughs> it's, it's smart to bold it, to bring it to, to someone's attention. Yeah, we. Um, I really work hard at trying to find out what words. I, I tend to read it over a few times before I decide what word it is. Um, based on what I tend to sk like skim through, um, because it's just a reality that people don't really read. They kind of skim through, but they look at the pictures. Um, so okay. highlighting specific words that connect to that picture, um, connect to what you want to tell people is really important. In fact, what we now know about people's behavior online is that you have eight seconds to grab their attention before they move on. And eight seconds is not a ton of time. So to do it with big, bold, beautiful images and really best practice copy to support it is uh, is a smart thing. Very true. Um, I know what point like really stuck out to me. I actually just went to a, a conference for marketing, um, and that eight seconds isn't really easy to grasp until you find out that it's less than a goldfish. Um, <laughs> So you really have to catch yeah. them um, right away in those pictures and um, try and you know capture them in the story and get them caught up in in all the the things that are going on um, to keep yeah. their attention. And uh, Emily, this is an interesting question from Dennis, and he's asking, you know, your opinion on having your own independent site versus being part of the of the brand site, and just want wanted your thoughts obviously you have a uh, you have an independent site but you're also part of Doubletree. Yeah, we do have both. Um I do like having our own separate one only because it lets us tell our story. We don't have much control over the branded website. Um they do a great job presenting our our stuff, but they don't tell the whole story. They're just there we're kind of like a a number in the in right. the Hilton booking is you know, it's nothing personal, but there's so many Hilton properties. Sure. Um, whereas when you go to a personal site or a site off of theirs, um, it more tells our story. It more tells, you know, what can you find there without, you know, with through images. I feel like it's more image heavy when we go sure. off of ours. Um, but it is, what's nice is it is directly connected to the Hilton branded site. So when you go to book your stay, it does go to the Hilton site. So everything um, just kind of seamlessly works together, which is really great. So I do yeah. like having both. 
Yeah, and that's a good point. That was one of uh, another question of Dennis's. What about the booking engine? And as you just said, you integrate with the Hilton booking engine. So at the end of the day, I think everybody's happy. You know, stories happen at the local level, right? It's stories are all about people and what's happening and you know what they're doing at the time. And so I think how you guys are approaching it is that uh, is right on. Yeah, definitely. We always look for. Um, local events that obviously the Hilton brand is not going to know about, um, so they won't be able to keep that up to date. Um, whereas on our personal site, we can keep that going um, and keep that, you know, story going on. Yeah, yeah, and it's kind of the best of both, right? Because uh, you know the Hilton brand does a lot in terms of search and driving people to create awareness of the Double Tree Lancaster. Then they find your site, they see all the local stuff and the true personality of the property and then they get ready to book and they're sent back to the Hilton booking engine. So it's a beautiful thing. It is. It's a great relationship. I really like having both. Um, they really, really helped us out. Yeah. Well, that's great, Emily. We've had a ton of questions come in. Thank you, audience. We appreciate hearing from you. And just to recap what Emily was talking about is, you know, 90% uh, the information get, that gets transmitted to our brains is visual and clearly great visuals need to be a part of the plan and a good and all-encompassing digital marketing system is going to do a number of things. It's going to maximize your time, reduce your effort, and then simply raise your hotel marketing to a whole other level and, you know, maybe a little self-serving for the for the hotel marketers out there, but it's certainly a way to impress your general manager and, you know, your guest benefit at the end of the day because they get, you know, they're more satisfied because what they see online is what they're actually going to experience once they walk through your front door. And then lastly, you know, it's all about the story, how you develop it, how you show it, and how you publish it on all of the channels that consumers are using. So again, thank you, Michael. Thank you, Emily. I'm going to t conduct another poll with the audience. Uh, and it helps us understand what you thought of today's content, if you think it was good. And so we'll ask a question. Based on today's content, will you attend a future webinar? And how you answer gives us an indication of what you thought of today. So uh, I'm going to let everybody weigh in, take a minute or so. Uh, by and large, the vast majority of you guys are going to join us again on another webinar. And uh, I'll talk about this a little bit in a moment, but the first part of the year is going to be all about content. So we, we're going to be focusing a lot of educational materials and webinars on how to find content, how to curate it, how to source it, and then how to publish it, because that's a big thing that we're hearing from hotels. So uh, I'm going to close the poll. Thank you, everyone, for uh, weighing in. Uh, by and large, everyone really liked what they heard today. You know, and I think it's also really helpful, Emily, to hear from a hotelier, right, because, um, you know, we can, we can relate to that, that kind of thing. So in closing, <clears throat> I'm just going to leave you with a few thoughts. If you guys on the line today share some of the digital marketing challenges that we discussed today, you can benefit from Visly, the, our new multi-channel digital marketing system. Visly helps you engage travel shoppers by creating relevant and powerful stories about your hotel, which will increase the time shoppers spend researching your hotel and which in turn will increase conversions and ultimately get you more booking. Once we have those stories developed, like Emily talked about, we want to make sure that they reach the millions of travel shoppers consistently by publishing them everywhere that they find you online. So whether that's your own website, your mobile site, social media sites, or the digital brochures on all of the third-party travel websites. And it really helps you communicate the value you're providing, like Mike said, so that you just don't sell on price. And it's an opportunity to set yourself apart from the competition so that the travel shopper 
chooses you with the certainty that it is the right choice for them. So uh, this concludes the webinar. If we have any last minute questions, please send them in through the questions dialog box. And I am going to share Michael and Emily's contact information. A couple of you have asked for the contact information with some very specific questions. But as I said, we have a big webinar coming up in January, an educational webinar about content marketing and how to create content that travel shoppers want to see. And as I said earlier, we're going to send you a thank you for joining us email with a link to the recording, which you can listen to again or share with your colleagues. So thanks, everybody, for joining us. We uh, wish you a very happy and healthy holiday season, and we will see you again in the new year. Thanks again, Emily Drennan from the <coughs> Lancaster, and Michael Ulch from Leonardo. Thank you to you as well. Thank you. Bye, everybody. We'll Thank see you. Bye-bye.